I'm Annie Duke. When you make a pre-flop raise, you're telling your opponents that you have a strong hand. So what are they telling you when one of them decides to make a re-raise before the flop? That's the question we're going to try to help you answer in this lesson on facing a pre-flop re-raise. Why is facing a pre-flop re-raise any different than facing a pre-flop raise? Well, because your opponent is sending you a very clear message that they have a very strong hand, the question then becomes, should you believe them? Before we get to the answer, let's remember why we raised in the first place. We did it to accomplish a few objectives, including establishing that we have a strong, playable hand, getting opponents to fold their marginal hands, getting other opponents to define the range of the kind of hands that they are playing. When we get re-raised by a player behind us, we have clearly accomplished at least part of our goal because if our raise says we like our hand, our opponent's re-raise says that they really like their hand. The biggest difference between getting raised and getting re-raised is that in one case, we've committed to the pot, and in the other case, we haven't put any chips in the pot yet. Where we have nothing invested, we don't lose anything if we fold. Where we have put chips into the pot, however, folding can become expensive. Of course, that doesn't mean that folding can't be the right play. In fact, it very often is. So let's look at what we need to consider when we get re-raised. Let's say we're in the early stages of a tournament. The blinds are 2550 and we have 2000 in chips. We raise to 150 from middle position with two eights and get re-raised to 600 by the button. What do we do? First, let's look at our position and that of our opponent. Since he's on the button, he'll get to act after us throughout the hand, which is a clear advantage for him. However, on the flip side, since he's on the button, we also know that he can be raising us with a wide variety of hands here. Anything from a bigger pocket pair to something like ace-king, ace-queen, or even smaller suited connectors like 9-10, or a complete bluff. How strong do we think our hand is against his probable range? Is it strong enough to call with? Or do we think we're actually ahead of our opponent? If we're ahead, is our hand strong enough to re-raise with all in? Next, let's look at what we know of our opponent's style. Is he loose and playing a lot of hands? Is he tight and only playing premium cards? Has he been bullying the table or has he been passive? Is it too early to have any solid read on his style at all? Finally, let's look at our stack sizes in this spot. With just 2,000 in chips at the start of the hand, calling our opponent's re-raise would leave us both with only 1,400 in our stack and looking at a pot that has 1,275 in it if we were to see the flop. That constitutes our opponent's bet of 600 plus our bet of 600 plus 25 from the small blind and 50 from the big blind. 1400 is not a big enough return to call the extra 450 on top of the 150 that we initially raised if we don't think that we have the best hand and we have to hit a set in order to win, which is a long shot. It's also not enough to call if we don't think that we can bluff and win after the flop, which is hard to do from out of position when our stack is only about as big as what's already in the pot. Can we really afford to make a bet of one half or two thirds of the pot after the flop or would we just have to move all in because we're already pot committed? Can we give this pot up even if we miss the flop? Considering our position and the fact that our hand is good but not great, it seems obvious that folding is the best play here. Sure, we're giving up 150 chips, but that's a small price to pay compared to the problem of putting ourselves in a situation where we could lose our entire stack and be out of the tournament. Remember, one of the reasons we raised in the first place was to gain information. We got it when our opponent re-raised and without any clear indication that we're actually ahead in the hand at this point, we have to believe that our hand isn't strong enough to gamble with 
at this point in the tournament. 